Yeah. So I'm, Aaron Rodgers, right? So Aaron Rodgers has lost his fourth straight NFC championship game. And after this game, the press conference, uh, he was just extremely deflated. And he's, he's had, he had comments such as saying like, I, I'm, I'm just pretty gutted after this loss. And he did say like yeah, the calls were bad and all that. But at the end of the day, he was just sort of like, he just seemed sort of, he just seemed depressed, like just flat out. I know depressed is a strong word, but he talked about how uh, this quote, word for word quote, almost lots of futures are up in the air and are unknown, mine included. So uh, he talked about players like Jamal Williams, Aaron Jones, guys that he really loves on the team that there might not be there. And even he even admits I might not be there. Aaron Rodgers might not be there. And I think we've seen a similar situation almost of all in the guy who beat him on the offensive sideline, Tom Brady, where he sort of also was on, like last season, he was sort of up in there after he lost in the playoffs, sort of like, yeah, I mean, my, my future is sort of up in the air. We'll see what happens. My future is unknown. And we saw what Tom Brady did. He went, he was on a team, the Patriots who were not the best fit for him. They didn't have the best. They did have, they did have a good defense, but they didn't put players around Tom Brady on offense. They didn't have the same old line they once had. They didn't have elite wide receivers. They didn't have elite tight ends. They didn't really have playmakers on the offense. And Tom Brady saw that he's like, I'm an old guy. I've got to, you know, go to a team that will appreciate me and use me to my fullest potential. And he moved to Tampa Bay and guess what? He's in Tampa Bay. He has, a, I'd say we can almost say an elite offensive line of all in the run game, pass blocking game. This, this offensive line was one of the biggest questions going into the season and they're able to protect Tom Brady. They're able to help him get the ball into his playmakers. And he's in the, in the Super Bowl because of it, he was in the Super Bowl because he realized this relationship with the Patriots is not working out. And even though he, you could say he was the loyal guy, he was the loyal boyfriend. He made, he made tons of sacrifices, took less contract money. He, you know, there's lots of things that Tom Brady did where other players like Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, they took big paydays, but Patrick, Tom Brady was like, no, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll take my L here and my money and to do it so that we can build a better team. He compromised. And, after a while, he realized, I can't compromise anymore. I've got to move on and find a better life partner. And he moved on and found the better girl with the Bucks. And I think Aaron Rodgers could very much learn from that sort of lesson from Tom Brady and the guy on the opposite sideline where he's been on the Packers for so long. And for the longest time, he had an incompetent head coach. He had an incompetent defense. And now, finally, it seems to be working. But at the same time, it doesn't seem to be working because they're capped at the NFC Championship game. <laughs> Like, yeah, exactly. Like they can't. They've and, been in the same spot too many times, man. And there was one key thing he said that I think I was looking through Packers media, and he said something like along the lines of he where he thanked all the reporters, and it was just sort of like a very somber moment. He was like, "I appreciate you guys for doing a great job," and I've seen lots of press conferences and all, and very rarely does someone sort of thank the reporters at the like the end of the season co like conference or the the press conference. And it just seemed very odd that he did that. And again, it might be looking like trying to die, dig into something that might not have anything behind it, but it just seemed like, I don't know. He might have very well played his last snap with the Packers. Like he has leverage. Uh, I'd say he has leverage on the team because he is a great player. If he doesn't want to play, then you've got to get value for him. And I don't know. What What are your quick thoughts on this? Because we we came up with a list of teams where we'd like to see Aaron Rodgers go. And including Green Bay as a total, there are three teams on that list. But I just want to see your, your reaction to the Aaron Rodgers press conference and just sort of the somber mood around him as a whole. Yeah, I think I think overall, I think Aaron Rodgers didn't look happy, man. I think that that's the simple fact of it. I think he didn't want to... He didn't want to beat around the bush. Just say, I'm not, I have to regroup. I have to rethink about, look around all my options. I think we may have seen the last of Aaron Rodgers, but I, even if he wants out, it's going to be very difficult for the Packers to get that, uh, to, to want to move on from him. They could be like the same, similar situation with like James Harden, where it'll take some time, maybe even play next season with the Packers. And, uh, get them to realize that because i mean the disrespect that he he's had man i mean you sign the guy long term then 
about a year or two later, you draft Jordan Love. I mean, in the first round, crazy Could stuff be the there. Backup quarterback, and, and then he played his heart out, right? Got, I mean, he didn't even have a say in the head coach, by the way. I, that was another problem I had too. Matt LaFleur was a brand new head coach that the president of the Packers decided to have. And uh, just so happened that that was the pro- that was the coach. Aaron Rodgers had to get with it. And um, it sucks, man. I think he could have been way more involved. If he was way more involved with the franchise, he's a lifetime Packer for sure. And I don't think Jordan Love was the pick. I think they would have picked a wide receiver, which was the obvious pick. They didn't pick a wide receiver in the, in the draft class at all. I, I, thought, I thought it was just to piss off Aaron Rodgers. Then they realized, okay, we do need a receiver. Let's trade for Will Fuller in the deadline. <laughs> then they, the Will Fuller trade falls through. And then um, and then now Deshaun Watson, obviously Deshaun Watson would have been pissed, but uh, that trade fell through. The Packers are still in the same position as they were before, after the deadline. They are still an elite team. Number one in the NFC, bravo. Aaron Rodgers wins MVP. If he didn't play in the MVP level, the the Packers would have probably been like 12, like 11 and five. I think they, that you could probably say that. But Aaron Rodgers played very well. He, he had a great season. One of the best seasons in his career. Wins his third MVP. And uh, when it came to the playoff games, I think Matt LaFleur just, I think the coaching was a problem there. I think... Uh, he he wasn't given the reins to do what he wants, man. At the end of the day, that was the difference between the Bucks and the and the and the Packers. Tom Brady was was literally chose the team that he wanted. He wanted Antonio Brown. Yeah. Bruce Arians didn't want Antonio Brown. He said it multiple times, even during the damn season. We didn't want Antonio Brown. We don't want that headache, that nonsense. I, I don't want it. Gronk. That's literally Tom Brady's guy. He can call him anytime. Even if he's 45, Gronk's going to come play with him. It, it, it's literally the same. It, it, he chose the shots. He wanted an O-line, got the O-line that he wanted. It got, it, defense mm-hmm. defense stepped up big time. Got got an all-pro wide receiver in Gronk got, uh, and, and uh, A.B. Got one of the greatest tight ends of all time in Rob Gronkowski. Done. Team listened to him. He, the, team the, listened, the team and listened. The team listens to Tom Brady. To Obviously, the Bucks were already in a shitty situation before that, right? That's fair. Seven and nine. They had already the quarter a, a quarterback that led the league in in quarter and uh, touchdowns. Fair. So they have to just cope into whatever Tom Brady says. Okay, fine. But the Packers were just there. They were in the NFC Championship game last year. Do you really think their goal? Do you think it's their goal Bowl. really was entering into this year? Their goal was just to match their performance? Hell no. They at least if you're gonna go to the Super Bowl, at least okay. If you're finished number two, I'm not gonna cut. I'm not. I'm gonna cut him some slack there. They made it to the same damn spot. I mean, honestly, it's just as bad as the Niners game. At least the Niners game, they got blown out. No chance. Whatever. And that okay. game should have been a lesson of all. Yeah, the last like, year, the 2019 what, N- NFC Championship game, they got the Packers whacked. should have learned from that. They lost 37 to 20, I believe. They got That's whacked. a blowout. And they should have realized, you know what? Instead of trying to think about the future, clearly our team is good enough to get here. We just need to exactly. sort of break through the wall, get some help for our quarterback, draft some wide receivers, or you know maybe draft a player who can help us win now. Draft a corner, for God's sakes, who is better than Chandon Sullivan and Kevin King, who are the corners on the Packers. But instead, they, they decided to draft for the future at a time where I think it was their Super Bowl window. Like If any team should have been drafting for the future, it should have been the Saints, right? The New Orleans Saints, where their quarterback was actively falling apart, and he's been falling apart and on the decline for the last two seasons. And even then, they went all in. The last two seasons, they drafted um, Marcus Davenport. They traded up for a pass rusher in the first round to try to help their quarterback and help – capitalize in your Super Bowl window and I feel like the Packers have failed to do that and because of that and that's something that Tom Brady dealt with as well in New England where Bill Belichick had roster control and obviously Bill Belichick is a goat you can't sort of I you mean, pick you Jimmy question G's him. second round yeah yeah I mean you can question him but at the same time he's won six Super Bowls but when it comes down to it they didn't let Tom Brady do what he wanted to do and they didn't capitalize on what should have been a Super Bowl window. They went to the future and Tom Brady was like, you know what? I'll leave. And Aaron Rodgers very much could do the same thing. And I think, I think we can, we, we've hampered on, we've hampered. We've talked about this topic a bit, but there's a few teams and I've got three teams total that I think are going to have Aaron Rodgers.